Well, guess what? It is comment time, and it is the 16th of September, 2024, in my very last morning, very last comment video from Eagle Nest. I'll be leaving today. I'll be taking a leisurely three-day trip into Pahrump. I won't be to, into Pahrump until Wednesday. So it's going to be leisurely. We're going to have fun. I'm going to have a video every day from the road. Dottie and I and George, and we're pretty excited about that. So let's get going with the comments. Um, uh, did a little video called Time to Move On, showing my campsite and talking about how much I'm going to miss things here. And Nancy Menderos um, commented on that and said, Seeing the map, I live an hour from Pueblo, Co Pueblo Co Colorado. I showed a map of where Eagle's Nest is located, just south of the um, Colorado border. Let's see. We have Jeremy Grandstaff. Wow, fascinating. To the biggest battery is here. The positive news story about new battery technology for the grid. This one's Ken Gray on time to move on. Too bad it gets so cold later in the year, but at least you can visit during the warm months. That is true, true, true. M. Campbell said, you've got lots of good memories and there's always next year. Yes, yes, yes. Ken Gray says on the biggest battery, I had to read the whole article to find it. It was supposedly use wind energy to charge when charging the iron bonds with oxygen, causing iron oxide, which is rust. Then the act of discharge releases the oxygen, converting the rust back into iron, kind of reverse rusting. I didn't know that was possible. It works like red blood cells in your body, I would think. Um, Don Williams on this, this video, five critical things they did not tell you about quartzite. It's, kind of, it's been pretty popular. For me, Twenty so far, like 2,400, 2,500 views, that's huge for me. I, I, I know if you watch big channels, that's nothing. But for me, it's big. Um, uh, Don Williams says walking sticks are great for posture too. Anyone in the bed back should use one or two. You can get dual hiking sticks. Let's see. I went a little far. Walking sticks. Okay. Captain Zuzu. Um, on my comments video. Hi there. FYI, we need to buy solar setup because after election, there's going to tax China imports. So battery solar panels are going to double in price. I don't know why no one talks about this. And I just said, hey, this politics free zone. And he says, I didn't, he responded to that, said, I didn't name one, any one side of politics. I'm trying to get the word out to people on a fixed income. Um, and I just said, look, no politics here, slides or not. And th that's just the way it is on my channel. And I, I, I didn't delete it. It wasn't like nasty or anything or really partisan, as he said. So I left it just to demonstrate to people that um, it's just we're a politics free zone on here. There's plenty of other places to see stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, er just not something that we discuss here, but there are lots of other places to discuss it and feel free. I do. I watch other stuff. I watch lots of things on politics and what may happen if so and so gets in office. I, I'm, I'm into it. Just not here. Uh, Don Williams on the quartzite video. He used a pop-up shower tent at quartzite. The wind blows it over constantly, but then it pops right back up. It's very entertaining. I admit that there's not much else to do in the desert. I can't agree with that one. Also, I tied up at least one rope to a bush or something solid. I don't think it would be much fun searching for the tent. Let's see, there's read more here. Oh, nothing more. Safe travels to all is what was the more. And it, I find, I love being in the desert all winter. I find lots to do. Um, and Jeremy, Grandstaff again, safe travels. The sadness means returning next year will be sweeter. Love your sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Damien's detransition. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. 
transition, detransition, untransitioning. I, I don't know um, whether you're going into transitioning into RV life or undoing that. Don't know what that means, but it doesn't matter. We don't have to understand what the meaning of screen names are. Hopefully you remember to clean your lens on your video camera. If you go this year, I just joined your channel. There's tons of glare having a dirty lens and also your resolution is a little low. Well, that's a bunch of criticisms. So this is what they're talking about is um, the video going this year. This is what it was like last year. It was like I re-uploaded from YouTube a video I did of the Big Ten show. And um, you can't do the download or you can't do the download in high resolution. It's like in 720p. So that explains the real real low resolution. And there's with my GoPro in the tent with all the fluorescent lights and stuff, tons of lens flare. It is not, a, it's not due to a dirty lens. It's due to the kind of lens that I have on my wide angle stable lens that I have on uh, my GoPro. I have, you know, of course, the first time I saw that, I was like wiping the lens and making sure everything, it's not, it's, it's lens flare. Um, so that's what that is. Um, you know, it's, it's not a helpful, it's not really a helpful comment for me only because the tone of it is not, not friendly and not kind. It, it just really isn't. So I, I am going to assume that person did not mean it to be unfriendly and unkind. And next time maybe they'll choose their words more kindly. That would be really nice. Um, so same person, my first time in courts, and I'm overthinking scorpions and rattlers. How do, how do many people deal with it? And I said, watch my video tomorrow. And that's the video. Watch, see the video today. And that's on that. Um, let's see. Ken Gray on the comment video. I wonder how your test kit will compare um, skip to or if this is boring. So... Um, I'm not, it is a, a lot of technical stuff. Ten, Ken did some research online and found like Quartzsite has like this minimal amount of, it's like he concluded um, uh, 0.0000239 milligrams in an eight ounce glass of water. I don't, I, I just, I don't know where he got his information. Um, and I just said, I'm going to do my own test. Um, you know, if that's true, that's wonderful. That's far below um, the average amount of salt in a glass of water, which is very hard to believe. I, I don't know. I, I can't speak intelligently about his source. Said he got it from the Colorado River Basin Safety Control Forum. I couldn't find it searching for it. Um, so we'll, we'll see when I get there. I'll do a test. I've looked extensively for what is the uh, sodium chloride or salt or sodium, all those terms, content of water in quartzite, water in the, in the LTVAs. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't find anything definitive. Um, I just know people sell a lot of water in town um, claiming the water doesn't have salt. So there's something there and my little experiment where my atomized water from the LTVA turned all my propane flames orange, which salt does, and it was, I think I proved pretty con conclusively that the cause of that was the salt in the water. And uh, the water from town does not do that. So your comments video um mark dyke 69 28 i had an older small dog and we were camping on the shores of lake havasu she fell asleep under some bushes got attacked by fire ants spent the night at the vets almost died a couple of months deal up just one more thing to be aware of when in the desert that's that's a good one i mean i've personally never seen um uh fire ants there in the desert, but Lake Havasu is pretty darn close. So I'm assuming, yeah, they're fire ants and I've just never seen them. And I, I, as a general, as a policy, I don't let Dottie go into brush and 
Dottie's always on leash, so um, that that's a, a good way to avoid that kind of thing. M. Campbell, um, biggest battery is here. Um, I've been doing some reading on these. They're made of non-toxic, non-flammable, inexpensive, and sustainable materials. They're very stable, have a lifespan, lifespan of 30 plus years, and hold their charges longer. The only downside is they're 50 to 60% efficient versus lithium, which is 90%. But if you have the room in a lot of them, they can't be beaten. For stabilizing a power grid, they are perfect. Good, good info. Great info. Randy, um, time to move on video. Sweet, gr or sweet, great 360. Safe travels to you and George and, of course, Dottie. Yep, we're going to be on our way in about, what is it? It's 5.39 a.m. And we're going to be leaving around 12.30 or 1, something like that. Um, my short, my happy place, Lisa Roth says, beautiful area. Great choice of music, too. I think some piano music, if I remember right. Um, Naj, on time to move on. Safe journey for tomorrow. Are you going to video the drive to Prompton Quartzsite? And I said, yes, it'll take three days. So three videos. Judy, since you mentioned cable locking your generator, since I'm in a Class C, there's a way to lock it to the ground. I always kept it inside my gazebo, but the gazebo died in the winds last season. will not be replacing it. My generator is heavy and hard for me to move, so I won't be putting it inside my tent. Any suggestions are appreciated as a way to chain it to the ground. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this dilemma. See you soon. It took me a minute to wrap my head around this and to understand, because my first thought was just chain it to your, it's a class C, so what? Just chain it. Chain it to your Class C. It's no different than my trailer. And then I go, oh, she's talking about the problem. When you leave your camp, and she, if, she, if you've got a Class C and you don't have a tow vehicle, you're you're driving your Class C into town. So you're leaving your generator out in the desert with your chairs and rug and what else you're leaving out there. And that's got to look like a pretty good temptation to someone. Dilemma. So that's a tough one. Um, what I suggested to her is, um, and it doesn't look like both my replies showed up. One is missing. Huh. Well, Judy, I'll just tell you what I said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I recommended these really long, thick rebars with an eyelet at the top that I've used to um, secure my solar panels. Like I drive them into the ground and I attach my solar panels to the eyelet so they stay out there even when there's a 60 mile per hour wind. My solar panels aren't going anywhere because I've got, I've got these stakes into the ground. And let me tell you something. At the end of the season, when I took these things up, it was a job to get these things out of the ground. I smashed them in with a big hammer into the into the desert, and to get them out was tough. So that's what I'm suggesting. If I, anyone else can think of a different thing that she can do, um, not for, you know, you can't pour concrete out there in the desert. You can't do anything permanent or anything that hurts the environment. <laughs> So what I said was, you know, give that a, that, that's a, that's a good idea for this reason. A determined thief will get that stake out of the ground and steal the generator, right? But it takes some work and time and most thieves aren't going to take that risk. Most thieves are like, oh, a generator. And then they go, oh, damn, it's attached to this and try pulling it by hand. It won't come up and they're out of there. They're, they're most, be, most of them are going to be out of there because the more they, they at least know, the more time they spend stealing, the chances are someone's going to, someone's going to notice. So that's my suggestion. And they can, they're sold at K and B tools. I use them to tie down my solar panels. And that, that was the second, the first one was comment is what I've explained about what they are and everything. That comment is gone. It's disappeared. And I added on to it to tell her where to get 
the rebar. So that explains that. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Um, RV Grand Mac Charlotte 4604. That's some name. That's on the five critical quartzite video. Salt and cal calcium. The reason I buy RO water. I don't know. Reverse osmosis water. Because the city water causes stomach problems and tastes horrible. Not all places have um, reverse osmosis water, though. RV relief in the water station by Chevron. Say filtered city water still salty. Thank you. And the Nick 3216 in my quartzite video. The five things you need to know. One, get good hiking shoes or sturdy shoes due to the rocky terrain. Two, nighttime in the desert can disorient you, especially during twilight. Three, crime and quartzite is not as bad as you may believe. Lock things down if you step away. Four, the desert is windy. Take precautions to hold chains, carpets, etc. in place. Five, water in the desert um, has a high salt content. You can purchase salt-free water at local stores. This is like a perfect synopsis and summary of my video. I couldn't have done it better myself. The Nick, the Nick 3216. Destiny Cisco, my happy place. You look happy. That's why it's my happy place. Good. Job. That's, I am happy. For Yellow Wolf, have you heard the BLM is proposing to increase the LTVA annual fee from 180 to 600? And I said, yes, I am. Yep. Um, Lisa Roth, kind of amazing. Uh, I do like, we keep improving larger batteries such as you're describing, seem like they would have been awesome for uh, living off grid. Yeah, if you had like a tiny house or a cabin or something, the the weight really of these things wouldn't matter, so, and they're, it, it'd be pretty cool. Um, <coughs> another from Lisa Roth on Time to Move On. Drive safely tomorrow on the whole trip there. Give our Judy a hug for me too. I'll be seeing Judy in Pahrump. Um, again, yay for Boston. This is wealthy Boston residents say yes to homeless. That was from the other day. Yay for Boston. The first thing people need is a safe place to sleep. Everything else comes after this. I love this, Rob. Thanks for posting. And we have Susan Jack on Time to Move On. I've enjoyed all of your videos of Eagle Nest, Angel Fire, and the surrounding areas. You have taken me on some fantastic trips this summer. Thank you. Safe travels. Thank you, Susan. And Tim, what are your temperatures at, out there now at 8,000 feet? I'm guessing they're pretty low in the morning. Well, it's only, it's 41 now and it's 546 in the morning. And that's warm for this week. It's been in the high 30s, Tim. It's been between 37 and 39 every morning for about the past week. Um, let's see. And that is... Let's refresh the page to make sure we haven't got a new comment on there. Um, and we do from Renee, safe travels. And that was just probably nine minutes ago. Thank you, Renee. And that is, uh, that's today. There was something I think I wanted to say. What was it? I know that I mentioned that I'm leaving today um, for Pahrump. Um I don't know where I'm staying tonight or Tuesday night, but I know I'm going to go slow. I'm going to be careful. Um, I don't, I'm looking at George, and George is not suspected yet that he's about to move. George, is, George the cat is not a fan, not a fan of moving. So George will be sedated later today and go in his little comfy cat cage in the the vehicle um well if there was something i forgot what the heck it was so i will see you tomorrow take care